Religion isn't just a belief, it's an experience. What you're experiencing may be a complete illusion or delusion of reality, but you're still experiencing it. When a person feels filled with the Holy Ghost, that person's body is experiencing a heightened state of sympathetic system arousal and is experiencing a state of euphoria. This person, of course, attributes this experience to God and points to this experience as evidence of God, as nothing could possibly cause this feeling. Of course, when one is first deeply infatuated with someone, they feel the exact same way. Psychology has found that many things have the same effect on people, and with the God helmet that causes spiritual experiences when magnetically stimulating the temporal lobes, the rarity and use of spiritual experience as evidence for God really has little to no impact. But people tie the experiences to their beliefs. I watched the movie Avatar. I thought it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Other people watched it and thought it sucked, or they had focused on the fairly cliché plotline. It was hard for me to believe that there were so many critics. Had we watched the same movie? Well, yes we had. They had watched it on a regular movie screen. I had watched it as my first movie in 3D IMAX. In 2D, the brain is fairly passive. There is little experience of interaction. This is the reason why using TV as a babysitter or those Baby Einstein videos have shown to have a negative effect on children's IQ, as babies need interaction to stimulate their brains to learn. 3D wakes up the brain and makes it feel more interactive. They watch the movie, I experience the movie. Religion is no different. Religion has been so successful because it has figured out ways to experience something, and from there you're just naturally open-minded to whatever is taught. Islam is an interesting example. In Arabic, the Quran is very poetic. Special Imams are taught methods of recitation of the Quran for greater poetic impact. The beauty of the verse can completely cover the shallowness and hypocrisy of the actual text. When read in another language, with the poetic elements removed, the Quran becomes a completely different book. Music is another way to experience something that covers the actual message but makes you feel good. Many hymns are beautiful to listen to, but if you read the hymn at face value, it can surprise you how different it is from how you perceived it through the music. A lot of why you like a song is the memories associated with the tune. For me, lyrics have always been secondary to music. I many times have a problem distinguishing certain words in the lyrics, the music definitely comes first. I have Asperger's also, so it's hard to get into new music, and I play and replay the same tune over and over again. However, I may miss the initial point of the song because I didn't correctly hear the lyrics. And in my brain, a lot of the lyrics are just nonsensical poetry to me, which is fun. Now that I no longer listen to country and no longer have positive connotations associated with it, I find myself shocked as to the amount of cheating and destructive behaviors it promotes. If we could separate some of our good feelings from some of our held beliefs and look at it logically, we might be shocked as to what we claim to believe, but we don't separate the two because we don't want the good feelings to be destroyed. To an outsider, reading the Bible seems shallow, stupid, or brutal. They probably won't get why anyone would follow it literally. Much of the stuff in it is just bad. The same is true when I read the Quran. I have no emotional experience or memories attached to it, so it just sounds like any other ancient book, with a brutal deity who tells you every other verse in hypnotic rhythm that Allah will not forgive you and will punish you if you don't obey him. Crowd hypnosis and other magic tricks are also used to allow the parishioners to experience the religion. Many megachurches and televangelist preachers use well-known illusionist tactics to stimulate people into hyping the experience. Other skeptical illusionists are keen to point these tactics out. A new book that is next on my reading list is called Slide of Mind, showing how neurologists are teaming up with magicians to find out how the brain is tricked. Aside from magic tricks used by illusionists, there is yet another way to increase the feelings of the experience. Much of it is just a slight change in language or dialect. Konnichiwa. Aloha. Guten Tag. Dras Vuches, comrade. Yar matey, she be a comely wench. Hey, top of the morning to ya. Now that I have offended nearly all of my subscribers with my complete and utter abuse of their language or accent, I will explain why I did this. There is a point to it. Language and accent are part of our lives. 
another person's language and accent takes us out of our reality. It feels exotic, exciting, or just plain fun. It's why there are reenactors. Hark, verily, forsooth, and huzzah! Why we find accents sexy or romantic. Bonjour, ma chère mademoiselle. And more importantly, why some elements of religion are so strongly held. The two I can think of right off the bat are the King James only group of Christians or the majority of Islam in general. Islam claims that the only way you can truly appreciate the Quran is if you understand Arabic. However, the majority of the Muslim world do not speak Arabic, much less read it. Ibn Warwick, who's a professor of the Quran, makes the point that just about every fifth word in the Quran is ridiculously ambiguous, and entire schools have been created with overly complex methodologies to determine what the words mean, and even they can't agree on most of it. Ibn Warwick and a few others have proposed that the actual Quran was written initially in ancient Syriac, which is a cousin language of Old Arabic, as the book makes a lot more sense with little ambiguity. He has had death threats on his life for this. Jews love using Hebrew as communally binding them and giving them a sense of spirituality. They even resurrected this dead language to be the official language of Israel as their languages were so varied. The King James Version of the Bible was the first version translated in English that was widespread accepted. It is to date one of the most inaccurate translations we have in English. However, the people who translated it did an excellent job of making it sound very poetic. Because of this loyalty to the poetry, some people are certain that every other Bible is a doctored copy by the Catholic Church to spread Satan's lies. When you fall in love with a language or culture, you really want to be part of it as much as possible. This is why the Klingon language was made. However, religion can hijack this, and instead of falling in love with a culture, you fall in love with pieces of the culture tied to a religion. Instead of trying to understand the culture, you try and understand the religion, and the culture is now a beautiful mystery. You may actually assume that the culture was just like yours, even if it was completely different. Buddhism tries to take people out of reality with chants and mantras. They understand that repetition or specific unusual phrases can take you out of your normal reality although theirs is to try and relax you and help focus your mind. This is the reason why spells and magic work, because they got your mind off of reality, making things seem supernatural. When all these little tricks are used to get your mind from watching or reading a religion to actually experiencing it, waking a person up from the shallowness, hypocrisy, or brutality is pointless. Mind you, this new generation coming up is predicted to leave their religion of birth at a rate of 80% before they're 30, whether they become atheists or some other religion is up in the air at this point. This shows that multimedia has seriously weakened the effects of religious experience. The kids see it in all their video games and movies. They're told that this is not real. Then they go to church and get told, no, this is real. They are going to start questioning it. As technology hits more nations and more of the young people will begin to question. With the rise of the internet, atheists are beginning to pop up in many Islamic countries to the point that the Saudi Arabian government is beginning to view it as a potential threat. When high-level multimedia is available to everyone, the ability to use old parlor tricks to keep people from questioning will be useless. Sadly, advertising and politics are heavily involved in the multimedia ring and becoming the new unquestioned religion for many. If religions want to keep their grip on their people, they had better upgrade the Bible or the Quran to 3D interactive cinematography and uh, maybe make the 12 disciples into uh, giant blue aliens just for good measure.